Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. Today's topic is free fall and acceleration of gravity, part one graphs. The objectives are know the acceleration of gravity, understand the meaning of free fall, be able to represent free fall by graphs. What is free fall? Free falling objects do not encounter air resistance. That's free of air resistance. Here is a ticker tape trace for free fall. Suppose a person drops a ball. As the ball falls each second, the distance apart is bigger and bigger. That's indicate there is an acceleration. As an object free falls, its speed is increasing. The distance traveled during each second also increases. The acceleration for any object moving under the sole influence of gravity, that means only gravity, no, no air resistance, okay, is called acceleration of gravity. We use the symbol little g to represent acceleration of gravity. This symbol is in your reference table. On Earth's surface, g equals 9.81 meters per second squared. g always is downward. So acceleration, remember, is a vector quantity. It has directions. This is the magnitude, 9.81 meters per second squared, and its direction is downward. I just want to talk about on Earth's surface. On Earth's surface means anywhere close to Earth's surface. Could be one meter apart, could, could be three meters above the Earth's surface, 10 meters, or even 100 meters. So as long as it's not too far from the Earth, not like astronauts going into space, it's near Earth's surface. The tall buildings, that's still near Earth's surface. The tall mountains, still near Earth's surface. So on um, near Earth's surface, this is the value we use in regions physics, g equals 9.81 meters per second squared. Here is a vector diagram represent acceleration. Here is a person throwing the ball going all the way up and then coming down like a baseball going up and down. So this arrow represents the acceleration. The size of the arrow represents magnitude. You see the arrow represents direction. That means this diagram means at every point of the path, the object acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Negative really means downward. Okay, 9.81 is the magnitude, meters per second squared. So the value of acceleration of gravity, little g, is different in different gravitational environment. We talked about g is only 9.81 on Earth's surface. But on the moon, g equals 1.6. So that's different gravitational environment. On Mercury, g is 3.97 meters per second squared. So acceleration, by definition, is how fast an object changes its velocity. So what does this mean? Acceleration at 9.81 meters per second squared means the velocity changes by this amount, 9.81 meters per second every second. That's what it means. So negative means going downward. Change is downward. So if the velocity and time for a free fall object being dropped dropped means start from rest. Okay, from, from a position of rest we tabulated, then one can, can see this pattern. So you start from zero, your velocity change by negative 9.81 meters per second every second. So at end of one second, your velocity is 9.81 meters per second going downward. At the end of two seconds, it will change by that much again. So your new velocity should be negative 19.62. At the end of three seconds, your velocity should change by this number again, become negative 29.43. At four seconds, it should increase by that number again, but it's in the negative direction, 39.24. At five seconds, should be negative 49.05. So as you can see, velocity increases for each second, it increased by 9.81 meters per second, each second. That's what it means by accelerating at 9.81 meters per second every second. Now
Now let's take a look at graphs representing a dropped object. Whenever you see this word dropped, that means its initial velocity equals to zero. It's just dropped. Start from zero, that increase in the negative direction, its velocity. So displacement, if you drop it, it's start from a height, right? Start from a height, then your velocity is zero. Start from zero. It's increasing the negative direction. Remember the slope in velocity versus time? That is acceleration. So this slope should be 9.81. It should be negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Slope is negative constant. Now in your displacement, you start from a height in order to drop it, right? Start from a height. Your slope should be negative because your slope is velocity. Right? In displacement versus time, slope is velocity. Slope should be negative because velocity is below zero. And how does this, is the slope constant? No, it's not constant because slope is increasing in a negative direction. So first you have kind of like flat, then getting steeper and steeper and steeper. So your graph should look like this. Velocity from starts from zero, so your velocity slope should be starting from zero, then becomes a little negative and more and more negative. Okay, that's the displacement versus time graph and the velocity versus time graph for an object dropped. So start from zero. Here is distance versus speed. Remember, distance is the magnitude of displacement. You can't have a negative distance. Nobody have say, what's the distance from Albany to Montgomery? Nobody say it's negative 120 miles, right? Distance can never be negative. Similarly, for speed, speed is not negative. Speed is just magnitude. So that's the corresponding distance and speed uh, graphs. Now graphs for object going up and down from ground. So you imagine yourself throw a ball, goes all the way up, slowing down, becomes zero, then comes back down. Okay. So in this case, let's see what happens. As it goes upward, velocity first is big, right? You throw a ball, you have a big velocity. It's a positive because it's going upward. But it's decreasing. It's going to get slower and slower. Finally, reach to zero, right? Acceleration is negative 9.81. That means you are getting slower and slower. So the slope of a VT graph should be constant negative, right? It should be start from here. Slope is negative, constant, come over here, becomes zero. Now at the top, remember velocity is zero. So slope is still the same. You're still accelerating. Your velocity is zero, acceleration is not zero. Then it comes down. So it goes up, becomes zero, then it comes down. When it comes down, velocity would be negative, below zero line, and increase in the negative direction. So the graph should look like this, right? Constant slope, velocity becomes zero, turn around, then coming back right down, okay? That is your velocity versus time graph. Now, how about it? Uh, let's take a look at special, really special times in the beginning, right at the top, and here is at the end. Let's see what happens in displacement versus time, right? As the object goes up, remember, it's, Displacement is positive. Displacement should be getting bigger and bigger, right? But since the velocity is positive, decreasing, so slope has to be positive, decreasing. What does that mean? Slope is positive, but getting smaller and smaller. At the top, the slope should be zero here. Then when it comes down, you are still above zero displacement, still above zero. Still positive, but it's decreasing and becomes zero. Now, since velocity is negative, right? Downward velocity is in negative. So your slope should be become negative and getting bigger and bigger in the negative direction. It should look like this. Because slope is zero, become negative. And finally, it becomes zero. 
total displacement is zero. Suppose you have a ball from here, from the ground coming back to the ground, total vertical displacement should be zero. So this is vertical displacement. Remember in the velocity versus time graph, area is the displacement. Here it says positive displacement. Over here is the negative displacement. Area is between the line and the time axis. So these two displacement cancels. Total displacement is zero. Total displacement is zero. You start with zero, you end with zero, right? The other thing is your velocity, you start with say uh, 30 meters per second, you end should be negative 30 meters per second, kind of symmetrical. Your final and initial speed should be the same, but in the opposite direction. Here is the big misconception. Does a heavy object falls faster than lighter object? A lot of people think yes, according to everyday ob observations. Think about if you throw a book down, you drop a book and a piece of paper. And obviously the book is going down first, right? If you ever have done that experiment, then you are correct. But that is because there is air resistance. If we take the air resistance away from the room, then everything should fall down the same, have the same acceleration. This, the value known as acceleration of gravity is the same for all free falling objects. So when you drop a piece of paper and a book, they are not the same because they are not free falling because there is air resistance. Okay, if they can free fall, then they will have fall the same, same time. So it doesn't matter how massive they are. It doesn't matter what shape they are. It doesn't matter how long they have been falling or if they are going up or going down or going sideways. It doesn't really matter. The falling acceleration is the same, right? Think, take a look at this soccer ball. So if this air resistance can be ignored during this time, acceleration is the same here, 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 here. Acceleration is the same everywhere. Here is an elephant and a mouse. Elephant might be a thousand times more than uh, the mass of elephant, a thousand times more than the mass of the mouse, but they all fall at the same rate. Let's take a look at this graph. Which graph best represent motion of free fall object? This is speed. We know for free falling, speed increases, right? Increases and uh, at a constant rate, increases at constant rate because acceleration is constant. The answer is D. Next one, a rock is dropped from the bridge. What happens to the acceleration? This is a free fall, acceleration is constant. So acceleration remains the same and the speed increases. Next question, the students throw a baseball vertically upward then catches it so if the vertically upward is considered to be positive which graph represent relationship between velocity and the time this is it you have a big velocity decreases becomes zero then turns around increases in the negative direction next one which graph again best represent the acceleration and the time so Around Earth's surface, acceleration is constant. So this is the constant acceleration. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.